What's happening, everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter. And for the first time in 2013, the fight gloves are on. UFC picks coming your way. UFC on Fox 6 goes down this weekend, headlined by a fight for the flyweight championship between current champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson and John Dodson. But before we get there, we got a big undercard to talk about, so let's get right to the first preliminary fight, which takes place in the welterweight division, which sees Simeon Thorison take on David Mitchell. Now, Simeon Thorison, 17-3-1 on his professional career, an even record of 1-1 one one in the UFC. Now, he was knocked out by Seth Bashinsky in his last fight, which snapped a three-fight win streak for Thorison. 15 of Thorison's 17 professional wins have come by way of submission, and he trained with Joaquin Hellboy Hansen at Hellboy MMA. Taking a look at David Mitchell, David Mitchell 11-2 on his pro career, a very good record, but both of those two losses have come in his last two fights inside the octagon. Two straight decision losses against decent competition in Paolo Tiago and TJ Waldberger. Now, nine of Mitchell's 11 wins have also come by way of submission, and this is his first fight since August of 2011, so this has been a bit of a layoff for David Mitchell. In what I expect to be an excellent grappling match between the two of them, I think Thoris and hits a little harder, is going to get the better of the stand-up exchanges, and I think he's going to get the better of the exchanges on the ground as well. My prediction, Simeon Thor to defeat David Mitchell by way of unanimous decision. Going to move up to the middleweight division now. We have Rafael Natal taking on Sean Spencer. Now, Rafael Natal, 14-4-1 on his professional career, record of 2-2-1 in his five UFC fights. Now, he was knocked out in his last fight by Andrew Craig. Seven of his 14 pro wins have been submissions, and three of his four career losses have come by way of knockout. So the stand-up game, maybe not necessarily uh, Natal's forte. He is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt who trains at Gracie Fusion. Uh, taking a look at Sean Spencer, 9-1 and one on his pro career, making his UFC debut. Currently riding a three-fight win streak where he has picked up wins in organizations like Legacy FC and Bellator. Five of his nine professional wins have come by way of decision. Now, Sean Spencer is a natural welterweight, which means at the 185 division, he is going to be facing a size disadvantage here, and I think against Rafael Natal, that's really going to come into play. I expect Natal to take this thing to the ground early and often, try to keep it there. Rafael Natal, I am predicting, will defeat Sean Spencer by way of a second-round submission. Moving back to the welterweight division, we have Mike Stumpf taking on Pascal Kraus. Now, Mike Stumpf, 11-3 on his pro career, lost his only octagon fight, being submitted in his last fight by T.J. Waldberger. Seven of his 11 pro wins have been submissions. Now, he trains with Team Curran. Uh, and this is also his first fight since September of 2011. So we have a couple of guys on this card who haven't fought in over a year. Pascal Kraus, 10-1 and one on his pro career. 1-1 one and one in the UFC was decisioned in his last fight by John Hathaway, which snapped a 10-fight win streak for Pascal Kraus. So he was really on a roll up until he met John Hathaway. Seven of his ten pro wins have been submissions as well. He is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu blue belt under Master Gordo Correa. In another fight here that I think is going to be primarily contested on the ground, I think it's going to be a bit of a grapple fest. Might not be the most entertaining fight in the world to watch. I'm expecting Pascal Kraus to come out on top to score a probably thin unanimous decision victory over Mike Stumpf. Up to the big boys now, the heavyweights. We have Mike Russell taking on Sean Jordan. Mike Russell, 15-2-1 on his pro career, and a go very good record in the octagon of 4-1. He was TKO'd in his last fight by Fabricio Verdum, which snapped an 11-fight win streak for Mike Russell. Eight of his 15 pro wins have come by way of submission. He has a Div 1 NCAA wrestling pedigree. We take a look at Sean Jordan, 13-4 and four in his professional career. 1-1 one and one in the UFC was decisioned in his last fight by Czech Congo. Nine of his 13 pro wins have come by way of knockout. He's a Jackson submission fighter, but he last submitted LeVar Johnson all the way back in Strikeforce. So... 
yeah, he's a Jackson submission fighter, but we haven't really seen a ton of Sean Jordan's submission game, and I'm not 100% sure that it's going to come into play in this fight. I'm going to take Mike Rusau here. I think he's got the more balanced overall skill set. Mike Rusau to defeat Sean Jordan by first round knockout or TKO. In the light heavyweight division, Ryan Darth Bader takes on Vladimir the Janitor Machyshenko. Now, Ryan Bader, 14-3 on his pro career, 7-3 in the UFC, was knocked out in his last fight by Lyoto Machida. Seven of his 14 professional wins have come by way of knockout. He is an unbeaten 5-0 when the fight goes the distance. He's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu purple belt and also has, of course, a Div 1 NCAA wrestling pedigree. Vladimir Matyushenko, 26-6 on his pro career, 7-4 in the UFC, was TKO'd in his last fight by the guy that Tommy Toehold calls Swedish chef, Alexander Gustafsson. 16 of his 26 pro wins have been finishes. He's got 9 knockouts and seven submissions. He is 10 and 2 when the fight goes the distance. As I've mentioned before, I've been very critical of Ryan Bader in the past. I think he's just your generic wrestle boxer with a right hand and he's just kind of your poor man's Dan Henderson, if you will. And if I take a look at Vladimir Matyushenko, if Matyushenko can't beat Ryan Bader, I don't really know where Matyushenko goes. He's too small for a heavyweight, he's too big for a middleweight, and if he can't beat Ryan Bader, he's never going to go anywhere in the light heavyweight division anymore at this point. Now, I mean, again, he's a very seasoned veteran. He's had a lot of fights, and he's getting up there in age. But if he can't beat Bader, I don't really know where Matyushenko goes after that. So i got to go with the guy that I, I can envision at least has his back against the wall. I'm going to take Vladimir Matyushenko to beat Ryan Bader by unanimous judge's decision. In the featherweight division, Clay Guida makes his 145-pound debut against Hatsu Hayoki, a guy that I have been very high on in the past, as I've said. Clay Guida, 29 and 13 on his pro career, 9 and 7 in the UFC, has suffered two consecutive decision losses against top competition in the lightweight division, Gray Maynard and Ben Henderson. 15 of his 29 pro wins have come by way of submission, and he is 9 and 6 when the fight goes the distance. Hatsu Hayoki, 26-5 and 2, 2 and 1 in the UFC, was decisioned in his last fight by Ricardo Lamas which snapped a six-fight win streak for Hayoki. All five of Hayoki's career losses have come by way of decision, and that really worries me because I don't think Hayoki is going to be fast enough to catch up to Clay Guida, get those leg trips that he likes to get, and keep dominant top position. If he can't catch Guida, he can't take Guida down. I expect Guida is going to put on another one of his classic Clay Guida fights, uh, keep at range and get the better of Hayoki in the stand-up. I'm going to take Clay Guida to defeat Hatsu Hayoki by way of unanimous judges' decision. And the final fight on the prelim card is in the lightweight division, which sees TJ Grant take on Matt Wyman in what could be a fight of the night candidate. TJ Grant, 19 and 5 in his pro career, a good record of 6 and 3 in the UFC. Currently riding a three-fight win streak over Evan Dunham, Carlo Prater, and Shane Roller. 13 of his 19 pro wins have come by way of submission. He is a BJJ Brown belt, and of course, as I like to mention, hails from my home province of Nova Scotia. Matt Wyman, 15 and 6 on his pro career, a 9 and 4 record in the UFC, so he's got a lot of octagon experience. Submitted Paul Sass in his last fight. Nine of his 15 pro wins have been finishes. He's got four knockouts and five submissions, but he's got no knockout wins since 2008. Maybe I'm being a little bit of a homer with this pick. I really like TJ Grant. I'm quite high on the guy, so I'm going to take TJ Grant to beat the more experienced Matt Wyman by way of unanimous judge's decision. We move to the main card now, which starts in the featherweight division. Former top contender Eric Koch looking to get back into top contendership versus Ricardo Lamas. Now, Eric Koch, 13-1 on his pro career, unbeaten in the UFC at 2-0. Currently riding a four-fight win streak, including UFC wins over Jonathan Brookins and Rafael Asuncao. Ten of his 13 pro wins have been finishes. He's got three knockouts and seven submissions. Looking at Ricardo Lamas, 12-2 on his pro career, 3-0 in the UFC, currently riding a three-fight win streak over Hatsu Hayoki, Cub Swanson, and Matt Grice. Six of his 12 pro wins have come by way of decision. Both of his losses have been knockouts. 
Now, in what's going to be a very, very close fight that I can see really going everywhere, because both of these guys are very, very well-rounded, I like Eric Koch. I think he's got the superior skill set, and I know he wants to get back into top contendership in the featherweight division to fight the winner of the Aldo versus Edgar fight, so long as there's no immediate rematch. I'm going to take Eric Koch to beat Ricardo Lamas by way of unanimous judge's decision. Up to the lightweight division, we have Anthony Showtime Pettis taking on Cowboy Donald Cerrone, and I am very, very excited for this fight, too. This is another fight that could be fight of the night. Anthony Pettis, 15-2 and two in his pro career, 2-1 and one in his three octagon fights. He knocked out Joe Lozon in his last fight. 12 of his 15 pro wins have been finishes, even spread too. Six knockouts, six submissions. Pettis, very, very dangerous wherever the fight goes. He is 3-2 and two when the fight goes the distance. A Taekwondo black belt and a BJJ purple belt. Now, Donald Cerrone, 19-4-1 on his pro career. He is 6-1 in the UFC, scoring a knockout win over Melvin Guillard in his last fight. 13 of his 19 pro wins have come by way of submission. He is 4-3 and three when the fight goes to decision. Very well-rounded, very dangerous, again, wherever the fight goes. And this is really a story of two guys who mimic each other very, very well. Cerrone's got a one-inch reach advantage, but I don't really think the reach advantage is going to come much into play. This is a fight that's going to be all about angles in the stand-up, whether Cerrone's got anything for Pettis' kicks. I think he does. I think Cerrone can get the better of Pettis, put Pettis on his back a couple of times, and do enough to keep him there to score maybe a thin, but a unanimous judge's decision victory. I'm going to take Donald Cerrone to beat Anthony Pettis by decision. Co-main event in the light heavyweight division, pride legend Quentin Rampage Jackson takes on the destroyer of worlds, Glover Teixeira. Now, Rampage, 32-10 and 10 on his pro career, 7-4 and 4 in the UFC, was decisioned in his last fight by Ryan Bader. 21 of his 32 pro wins have been finishes. He's got 14 knockouts and 7 submissions, but Rampage has not finished anyone since 2008. Now, Glover Teixeira, 19-2 and 2 in his pro career, unbeaten 2-0 and 0 in the UFC, currently riding a 17-fight win streak, a huge win streak for Glover Teixeira, including UFC wins over Fabio Maldonado and Kyle Kingsbury. Now, 12 of his 19 pro wins have come by way of knockout. He's known more as a stand-up fighter, but he does have a BJJ black belt. When people think about Rampage Jackson, I can't shake the feeling that everyone's thinking nostalgically, like, oh, Rampage is just going to run through this guy. Well, maybe the Pride Rampage is going to do that, but 2012-2013 Rampage just doesn't feel very motivated to me. And I know everything coming out of his camp is, oh, I'm in the best shape of my life for this fight, and I'm really motivated. We've heard this story from Rampage before. Until I see Rampage do it again, as much as I want to bet with him, I can't do it. Especially against a guy like Glover Teixeira, who has an iron jaw and will take your head off. I'm going to go with Glover Teixeira to beat Rampage by way of third round knockout or TKO. That takes us to our main event of the evening for the flyweight championship, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson taking on number one contender, John Dodson. Now, Demetrius Johnson, 16-2-1 on his pro career, 4-1-1 and one in inside the octagon. He has two straight decision wins over Joseph Benavidez in the title fight, as well as Ian McCall. Nine of his 16 pro wins have been finishes. He's got three knockouts and six submissions. Demetrius Johnson is a Pancration fighter, which if you know anything about Pancration, that is true no-holds-barred fighting. John Dodson, 14-5 and five on his pro career, an unbeaten 3-0 and o in the UFC. Currently riding a five-fight win streak, including UFC wins over UCA Formiga, Tim Elliott, and TJ Dillashaw. Now, John Dodson is 6-5 and five when the fight goes the distance. So, if the fight goes to a decision, it's kind of hit and miss whether it's going to go in Dodson's favor. And, uh, honestly, I think this fight is going to go to decision. I don't see either guy finishing the other one. This could very well be the fastest five-round fight in UFC history, but I'm going to take the champ. I'm going to stick with Demetrius Johnson to defeat John Dodson by way of perhaps a slim, unanimous judge's decision. Decision victory.
So those are my picks for UFC on Fox 6. Run over them here with you one more time. Starting on the undercard. Welterweight, I have Simeon Thorison to decision David Mitchell. Middleweight, I have Rafael Natal to submit Sean Spencer in the second round. Welterweight, I have Pascal Krauss to decision Mike Stumpf. Heavyweight, I have Mike Roussel to knock out or TKO Sean Jordan in the first round. Light heavyweight, I have Vladimir Matyshenko to decision Ryan Bader. Featherweight, I have Clay Guida to decision Hatsu Hayoki. Lightweight division, I have TJ Grant to decision Matt Wyman. Now going to the main card, I have in the featherweight division, Eric Koch to decision Ricardo Lamas. I have in the lightweight division, Donald Cerrone to win a close decision victory over Anthony Pettis. Light heavyweight co-main event, I have Glover Teixeira to knock out or TKO Rampage Jackson in the third round. And in your main event, for the flyweight champion, I have your champion, Demetrius Johnson, to decision John Dodson after five rounds to retain the flyweight title. Those are my picks. Want to hear your picks in the comments section below. Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, and it's good to be back with the UFC picks.